if you're a medical student that's wasted a lot of time on questions like this, hopefully this diagram I'm about to show you can help you save some time on the exam. These types of questions involve some sort of control drug that they want you to figure out what the mechanism is and they'll give you arrows indicating its effect on either heart rate or blood pressure and then you have to figure out what this magic drug does. So I came up with this diagram that I think simplifies it. So you either have receptors on your vessel wall, on the heart itself, or you have receptors that you can mess with in the CNS. Pretty much if you are increasing heart rate, it only happens two ways. If you're in activating beta-1 receptors and causing tachycardia directly at the heart, or you can also cause a reflex tachycardia by inducing vasodilation via a beta-2 or an M3, because remember these two receptors cause vasodilation, whereas alpha-1 receptors are going to cause vasoconstriction. So if you add phenylephrine, which is an alpha-1 agonist, that is going to constrict your vessels, work through the ganglion, and then activate your M2 receptors on the heart to slow it down so that you can maintain homeostasis. So this is the idea of these questions, is they want to see, do you understand this whole mechanism? So a couple tricks. So if you know that these are the only receptors on the vessel, and these are the only receptors on the heart, you can kind of slice your answers in half. And then there's a few, the one thing that makes this really easy if you check out the ganglion blocker, because usually they have it in here. Like for example, in this question, it's hexamethonium. And we can see in this question that when we add the drug to it, if we pre-treat it with hexamethonium, meaning we're putting in a ganglion blockade here and then trying to put the drug in, it stops the effect. So this tells you that if we block the ganglion, the reflex isn't working. So this is a really easy way of saying, hey, it has to be one of these receptors. Otherwise, it wouldn't stop through the reflex. So we know already for this question that this magic drug increases heart rate, and it does that via one of these receptors. So um, the only other thing that's weird is if the, the arrows for your ganglion blocker and your drug are gonna, they can either be, you know, you can have no effect, you can have the arrows going the same direction, meaning they both increase heart rate, or you can have them going opposite direction. So we'll do two other practice questions to show you the difference, but this is where you want to start because it eliminates answers for you quickly. So, again, if we are, know that this works through a reflex, we're looking at one of these receptors, and if we know that it increases heart rate, we know that it has to be something that is the opposite, causing vasodilation because it's going to work through the reflex to cause tachycardia to balance out the pressure. So we know that it has to be an M3 receptor or a beta 2 receptor that's activated. So in order to figure out which one it is, you've got to look at the other drugs. So now we've seen that if you pre-treat it with prazosin, which is an alpha 1 blocker, it doesn't have any effect on the drug because the heart rate still increases. So that's what this is saying. It's saying I'm pre-treating with prazosin, aka I'm blocking this, and then I add my drug, and it still is causing an increased heart rate. And we know that that increased heart rate is caused by a reflex because I'm getting no effect when I block the ganglion. So I know that it still has to be one of these, right? So we'd say, okay, well, prazosin has no effect. Okay, so that tells us it has to be an M3 or beta 2. So then we check the next one. Oh, we see propranolol. Well, we know that that is a non-selective beta blocker because it's in the second half of the alphabet. So that means we know it's blocking beta 2 or it's blocking beta 1. Either way, we know that it can't be the beta receptor that we're dealing with because propranolol causes no effect of this magic drug. So that means we're left with checking out what atropine does. Now we know that atropine works as a muscarinic blocker, so it mimics synthetic effects, but this is saying it still increases it. So you're left thinking, well, what the heck, how can I increase, or how could I cause a vasodilation if my M3 receptor is blocked? Well, think, there's only one other thing that could do that, is that doesn't involve any receptors, but still causes vasodilation. And if you're thinking nitric oxide, you are correct. So that's how you work through this question. So we know it can't be the others, because of the process of elimination. So this, these questions get easier if you do more practice. So let's check out another one. So this drug, approach it the same way. So we see the control drug, meaning without anything added, decreases heart rate. So that means that it has to either activate this receptor at the M2, or it's got to work through a reflex 
working, so that means it would have to act via the alpha-1, causing vasoconstriction if it's decreasing. So that means it can't act at beta-2, M3, or beta-1. So that helps. But check it out. Hexamethonium, we get flipped arrows here. So that means, so this is the special rule, and this is what I wrote here in the diagram, that if the effect of the, of the ganglion blocker makes the arrows go in the opposite directions, then that drug works at multiple receptors. So you can memorize that, or we can walk through it. So what does this mean? Well, okay, if, I'm, if this drug causes a decreased heart rate, but then I block the ganglion, then that means it's still able to work over here when it's blocked. So I still get an effect. So that means it has to work at one of these receptors and one of these receptors. So you should be thinking something like, you know, norepi or uh, epinephrine higher low dose because those can work at, you know, alpha or beta receptors depending on their, their dosage. So, um, you know, so you're definitely, you definitely know, well, it can't be nitric oxide like the last one because that would be blocked by the ganglion, right? It also can't be something that only works at one receptor. Um, so, so now let's check out the next thing. So this one again, so when we add prazosin, so prazosin is going to give us the opposite effect. So, so you got to think, well, if, if I block alpha-1, then that is giving the opposite effect. So that means that this drug, this control drug, had to work at least at alpha-1 because otherwise we wouldn't get an opposite effect. So that means if I block the alpha-1, then that means it has to act over here somewhere once we block the ganglion. So you got to think, so it's something that acts at alpha-1, and then now we know if we block that receptor, and then it increases heart rate, so it's got to be something that acts at alpha-1 and beta-1. So, I mean, that's kind of giving it away at this point, but let's just keep going through. So then if, I, if we put in a beta blocker, propranolol, that's non-selective, so that's going to block both your beta-2 and your beta-1s. So if we already know it's going to act at the alpha-1 receptor, because we just figured that out of the last one, we would, again, expect that the heart rate would decrease, right? Because we know it acts at alpha-1, and then we're now we're blocking the beta-1. So we would expect the heart rate to decrease. And then lastly, if we look at atropine, well, atropine is either going to block your muscarinic, but we already know it doesn't act at the muscarinic, so it's going to block the, the parasympathetic effect. So then we would expect that the heart rate would increase because we cannot have the reflex bradycardia. So that means it has to, again, so we're looking at something that acts at alpha-1 and beta-1. And if you're following along, you figure out, okay, yes, neurepi makes sense because it is able to act at both of those receptors. So... Again, your key here is looking at the opposite arrows to know that it can't be any of these top three choices. And then we know that um, you can figure out based on what neurepi and epi act at, which is the right or wrong answer. So let's check out one more. So this one, we're getting, again, the increased heart rate. And then if we look at the ganglion blocker, we still get an increased heart rate. So this is telling you that the drug does not work through a reflex because it's able to increase the heart rate even when we knock out the ganglion. So we need a beta blocker, or a beta activator, I'm sorry. So we would expect that if you add atropine, it's not going to make a difference because we know this drug is acting directly at beta 1, and atropine would block the M2. And then phenoxybenzamine, we know that is an alpha blocker, so that shouldn't have any effect either because that's over here on the vessel and we already know that it acts via the beta 1. So then you can just eliminate your other answer choices. So we're looking for a direct beta 1 agonist. Well, it can't be acetylcholine. Hydrophonium is just going to increase more acetylcholine. And then nitric oxide is going to work via M3, so that's not it. And we know that norepi prefers alpha, so that's going to leave us with isoproteranol because we know that acts at beta-1 and beta-2 receptors specifically. So again, just to review this diagram, check out the vessel. Just know that these are the three receptors at the vessel. These are the two receptors at the heart. And what happens if you knock out the ganglia? Just remember the arrows for your ganglion blocker and your drug. So if they go in opposite directions, like we looked at with norepinephrine, you're going to have opposite arrows, and that's going to tell you that it acts at two different receptors on the heart, because otherwise there's no way that it could act through the ganglion with a ganglion blocker. Uh, the only other thing that they could ask you is if you add an acetylcholine esterase, which would 
increase the, the nicotinic receptors at the ganglion. So, but these are the three main types of questions that they'll probably ask you. And so hopefully this diagram helps you out.